Peter Thiel is one of the co-founders of Palantir, but we don't talk about him enough because he's not in the public limelight as much as someone like Alex Karp, the current CEO, or Sham Sankar, the current CTO, and a host of other individuals that still speak publicly on the company. But we do have some gems from the past of Peter Thiel actually explaining, discussing, and talking about Palantir. Now, the clip I'm about to show you is and react to is a clip that I think I saw a year or two back. Never really took that seriously, wasn't that deep into it. Now, obviously, I'm a lot more deeper and I care a lot more about his thoughts. And one of the things he says in this clip is something that I've been echoing to a lot of people in terms of understanding the moral argument for why Palantir working with the government actually is the best thing for civil liberties protections and not this evil spy CIA type of controlling behemoth that people think that it is, but actually stopping the evil spy controlling behemoth that is the government. So let's take a look at this clip. This is from an interview about four years ago uh, of Peter Thiel explaining Palantir and we'll react to it live. This is clearly going to be a theme to almost everything else we talk about. So let's let's sort of catch up to where you are today and then we're going to go back to some of that stuff. Uh, tell me a little bit about Palantir. Well, this was uh, this was another company I started uh, in uh, in 2004. Uh, it was um, uh, sort of the big pic the big picture where PayPal was sort of revolutionized money and, and payments. The big picture for Palantir, and this was sort of like in the wake of 9-11, a few years after that, was um, could one do something from a libertarian or civil liberties point of view that would still be, you know, tough on terrorism and uh, and and things like this? And um, and the the sort of uh, the sort of sense I had was that. Uh, that uh, the way we were going with just you know ridiculous airport security checks and uh, you know, super intrusive um, surveillance all the time, you know, wasn't really making us safer. Yeah. And so this was sort of your answer to the Patriot Act in a way. In a way, this was sort of you know it was like I, you, know, you had the ridiculous lines at airports. You'd been you know through all all, all the ways that uh, you know the response to, um, and uh, and it was and there was a question: Was there some way? Was there some technological fix? And you know, one of the ways I often think of technology is um, that it's a way to do more with less. And um, and so you know, you can um, you can get um, you know you can get more energy for less money. That's like an energy innovation, mm -hmm. or cleaner energy for you know less pollution, um, more energy that pollutes less. That would be like a technology technology innovation in clean energy. And in the security space, the doing more with less is something like um, is something like more security with less intrusion on people's civil liberties. And that's kind of, a, that's kind of the, the trade-off that you want. So I want to discuss that real quick, and then we'll get deeper into the clip. Now, one of the things people don't understand about Palantir is that they were using the same type of algorithms that PayPal used to do fraud detection, which is finding uh, needles in the haystack where you take a lot of data, try to do pattern recognition, and then get insights from that data uh, to be able to like make decisions. And that's what happened with PayPal. That's what revolutionized it. That's why eBay bought it for $1.5 billion. And those algorithms were then able to be used in the content or the idea was, could we use those to stop terrorist attacks after 9-11 with the government? Now, obviously those algorithms over the past 20 years are powering lots of different companies and enterprises, right? The business has really expanded. The idea has grown since then. But what Peter Thiel is saying right there is a, such a philosophically interesting argument. And it gets me so upset when I'm talking to people who are just say Palantir wants to spy on you and and take all your data and, and control you. And it's like, we have to break this down to really understand this. And if you ever get into this argument with someone who, t who says this about Palantir, this is how you break it down to them. If bad things happen in a society, the state, which is supposed to be theoretically keeping everyone in that society safe, the government, needs to be able to take actions in a policy sense to stop bad things from happening. So if a terrorist attack happens because uh, the, air, the, the regulations on what you can or can't bring on an airplane were pretty chill, pretty lax, then the government's response to bad actors, and it only takes one or two bad apples doing a catastrophic event that changes the course of history, is to have more regulations, more intrusions, more disrespecting of civil liberties. Why? Because the government's argument is like, hey, yes, we're going to quote unquote, racial profile you. Yes, we're going to check you aggressively at TSA. Yes, we're going to do blah, 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 blah. But we're allowed to because if we don't and we're wrong about a certain person here or there and another thing like 9-11 happens, 
Well, we can't have that happening. We can't have that happening for the economy. We can't have, have that happening for safety reasons, all that stuff. So from a utilitarian perspective, utilitarianism is simply the philosophical school of thought that says we should do the greater good for the greatest amount of people. So we should take actions uh, in which the means justify the ends. So if the ends of an action are more people are safe, then the means in which we get there it can be intrusive, it can be violating of your civil liberties, but that's okay, because at the end of the day, everyone's more safe. Peter Thiel has always been a libertarian, right? That's his governing political philosophy. So his argument is like, wait a second, what if we could use technology that historically has been more intrusive to be able to build out data, algorithms, all of these different things that could actually stop the government from doing those things? Well, how do you stop the government from intruding on people's civil liberties? Because the government says we have to keep people safe the algorithms keep people safe because they stop the bad things from happening in the first place. Meaning, if you have software that can detect when a terrorist attack is coming because the software puts the pieces together, it simulates what could happen, what would happen, what what should happen, what might not happen, and then you can take decisions based on that, which now companies can do, right, in their own businesses, how much more effective would that be at stopping terrorism or bad things from happening so that the state doesn't have a justification to be able to intrude on your civil liberties. So the Patriot Act, which is one of the most intrusive acts that happened as a result of 9-11, gave the state almost full control to be able to do these types of things because no one wanted another 9-11. Well, if you had software that stopped 9-11 in the first place, you would actually be protecting people's civil liberty in the long term because then the government would not have the justification uh, philosophically and the mandate basically given by senators and the public to do those horrible intrusive things. That is why Pounter is actually helping the state be less of a evil spy behemoth versus enabling them to do more because they stop bad things from happening in the first place. And that uh, the non-technological debate that we had in the U.S. in 2004, in many ways that we still have in 2018, is um, it's always uh, it's always you do more with more versus <laughs> less with less. Right. And so you can have the um, the neocon. Um, Cheney version, let's say, would be that we're going to have, um, you know, we're going to have, um, you know, more security with more civil liberties violations, and then you can sort of say that the um, equally luddite ACLU would say something like, we're going to have fewer, um, um, you know, civil liberties violations, and we're going to have less security. Right. And um, and that's kind of the that's the the way the ideological debate gets framed. Mm -hmm. Now, I, I'm sympathetic to the ACLU on civil liberties, uh -huh. but I think they will always lose that debate because uh, the way you preserve civil liberties is not to have terrorist attacks. Because when you get a terrorist attack, you get the Patriot Act. And uh, you know, if, if the World Trade Center would erode civil liberties as much as it did in 2001, I didn't even want to think what would happen if you had another terrorist attack. So when organizations say, oh, Palantir is evil because they're violating civil liberties, blah, 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 blah. A lot of those claims, right, not really rooted in truth or fact or logic. Teal's argument is if you don't stop the attacks from happening, those civil liberties will only get worse, which is why technology, even if there's some minor infringement on civil liberties, it is maximally way better than the state feeling like they have the uh, unilateral ability to go do something because... You can actually stop bad things from happening, which takes away the state's justification to then be uh, essentially authoritarian in people's lives, right? Which is what the Patriot Act was. And so yeah. you have to prevent it to uh, to stop uh, to stop more erosion. What Palantir does is uh, is um, it 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 uh, it sort of is a way for um, for uh, for um, you know patterns and data to be um, visualized through a combination of computers and human analysts. And um, and then um, and then in a way that doesn't simply scour the planet and get all the information about everybody. So it's just if there's something suspicious, then you look some more. Mm -hmm. And and so there's sort of a there's a natural predicate you build before you you investigate people. And in, in that sense, it's it's way less intrusive. Is this a tough position to hold just because people seem all too eager to give up their civil liberties? Like, we always want easy answers, so that's why I think the Patriot Act passed with two dissenting votes, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, that people don't really, we act so emotionally all the time, mm -hmm. and especially after a time like September 11th, we were really, I think, out of whack individually mm -hmm. and collectively, mm -hmm. that you can come in with a, mm -hmm. a more sane answer and say, I understand civil liberties and I don't want big government, but I want us all to be safe. And that that's almost doesn't ring for people because they just want the easy answer. They want the bumper sticker answer. Yes. Yes, I, I think it's, it's not the easiest sell, 
but uh, but I, I think there is certainly a lot more awareness today about how much civil liberties have been eroded, you know, how we're living in this quasi-surveillance state all the time and how you know, deeply uncomfortable uh, that is on, on, on so many levels. I think that, uh, I think that uh, the way, um, you know, I think certainly if it worked, if the, if the Luddite heavy-handed approaches actually worked, mm -hmm. um, then I think people, people would be more tolerant. And then there's, there's sort of a sense that they, they, don't even, they don't even work. Yeah. Is it and so, you know, that's Teal's main point. It's like, look, if government intrusion actually worked, maybe people would be okay with it. But because it doesn't work, it only violates people's, you know, rights to live, autonomy, freedom, etc. Then there has to be a better solution to this. And the better solution is actually using technology. I think this is something that even most Palantir investors, like, don't fully understand. Because this is the origin story of Palantir after 9-11. Uh, and this is one of the reasons why they're so keen on working with the government. When Alex Karp talks about protecting civil liberties and making sure that data is cross-functional, it's cross-collaborative, that certain organizations within a governmental agency can see the data versus can't see the data, all of these tools have to be built in to the technology, and they have to stem from a philosophy that they deserve to be built in the technology in the first place. And if they're not there, then the tech's not going to endorse it, which means the value to the tech isn't going to be the thing that Peter Thiel is talking about, which is this idea that you can stop bad things from happening while protecting civil liberties. So I think that's one of the most important things to understand if you're a Palantir investor. This is the origins of how Peter Thiel thought about this idea. It was a really revolutionary zero to one original idea. And that idea led to say, hey, how can we implement this for commercials and enterprises? And now you've got a $20 billion company because um, people, you know, Palantir was able to figure out how they can really scale this across the entire world. So those are my thoughts. Let me know what you think about Peter Thiel and his original vision for starting Palantir. Uh, and if it makes sense for philosophically why this would actually stop bad things from happening, which would ultimately make the state less intrusive in people's lives, which would justify why the technology is ultimately a good moral ethical thing to be able to implement uh, in governments. Thank you for listening and watching. I'll see you in the next one.